Gopi Parana Dhana Madhana Manohara Gopi Parana Dhana Madhana Manohara Kalya Dhamana Vidhana Kaliya Dhamana Vidhana Amala Harinam Amya Vilasa Amala Harinam Amya Vilasa Go Bipina Purandarana Vina Nagarabara Bipina Purandarana Vina Nagarabara Vamsi Vadana Suvasa Vamsi Vadana Suvasa Braja Janapalana Surakula Nashana Braja Janapalana Surakula Nashana Nanda Kudana Rakoala Nanda Kudana Rakoala Govinda Madhava Navanita Taskara Govinda Madhava Navanita Taskara Sundarananda Gopala Sundarananda Gopala Yamuna Tatachara Gopi Vasanahara Yamuna Tatachara Gopi Vasanahara Rasa Rasika Kripa Mohaya Rasa Rasika Kripa Mohaya Shri Radha Balava Vrindavana Natabara Shri Radha Balava Vrindavana Natabara Bhakati Vinoda Shraya Bhakati Vinoda Shraya Jai Haradha Madhava Kunja Bihari
Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balaba Girid Bharadhari Gopi Jana Balaba Girid Bharadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjanha Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjanha Yamuna Tiravanachari Yamuna Tiravanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Premanande Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're continuing the presentation on the prayers by Queen Kunti. We will just review what we covered. Here you can see the first verse. You can repeat after me, please. Kunti Vacha Namashe Purusham Twadyam Ishwaram Prakrite Param Alakshyam Sarvabhutanam Antarbahira Vashtitam Translation, Srimati Kunti said, O Krishna, I offer my obeisances unto you 
because you are the original personality and are unaffected by the qualities of the material world. You are existing both within and without everything, yet you are invisible to all. So Queen Kunti described Lord Krishna's position that he is the original personality. In other words, everything comes from him. It's stated in the Bhagavad Gita like that. And here also Queen Kunti is confirming it. Lord Krishna is not of this material world. He's described here, he is Purusham. He's a person. And he is Prakriti Param, Ishwaram Prakriti Param. He's the controller of Prakriti. He is transcendental. All right? And then we went on to the second verse. Maya Javani Kam Maya Vikani Kachanam Agyan Adhok the Jam Aviyam Nalaksha Se Mudadrisha Nato Natya Daro Yata Translation, being beyond the range of limited sense perception, you are the eternally irreproachable factor covered by the curtain of deluding energy. You are invisible to the foolish observer, exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized. So in the second prayer, Queen Kunti. Yeah. So Lord Krishna, uh, Queen Kunti is describing how Lord Krishna is covered by this curtain of deluding energy. We were explaining yesterday how the Yoga Maya curtain covers up Lord Krishna. And Queen Kunti gives an example. She said, just like an actor dressed as the player is not recognized. So, you, we gave the, we were, di recounting Srila Prabhupada's words when he was describing this. He said, sometimes the father will be in the drama and he will be on the stage. And the mother and the child will be in the audience and they will be watching. And the mother will say, oh, there's your father. But the child will look and say, where? That's not my father. Because the child, the, the father has a different dress and he's behaving in a different way. He's playing a part in the drama. Just like sometimes we do the drama of Ajamila and the Yamaduts. And the Yamaduts come to take Ajamil. And then the Vishnu Duts come, of course. So people are dressed as the Yamaduts. And the little child is watching. She cannot recognize her father because the, child, the, the father is dressed and behaving in a different way, just like an actor on the stage. The mother knows, no, no, that's your father. Mother can recognize. Why? Because she has knowledge. She knows. So in the same way, one with knowledge, they can see the Lord they can see God in everything, everywhere. One who is actually trained, who has that knowledge, then they can understand how the Lord is everywhere. And that was why Srila Prabhupada was saying, it's so important for us to have temples and mosques and churches 
because then people have an opportunity to go and hear and to be educated about spiritual life and about the existence of God. We don't want everyone to simply be atheists. We want them to understand there is God, there's a personality, there's a creator behind this world. It's unfortunate that in the Kali Yuga, so many people become atheists, or some, sometimes they simply become agnostics, means they don't know. But we are trying to educate people about these things. And Queen Kunti, she knows. She's very, a, a very enlightened lady, almost on the level of Mother Yashoda. And she is also very humble. She's describing here that Lord Krishna is beyond the range of sense perception. That we cannot understand the presence of God by our own efforts, but he can reveal himself to us. He will reveal himself to us when he is pleased, when we are able to please him by our devotion. And we practice devotional service here. This center is for that purpose, that we can all practice hearing and chanting, which is the basis of devotional service, bhakti yoga. All right, so then we're going to go on to the third verse tonight. You can repeat. Tata paramahamsanam muninam amalatmanam bhakti yoga vidan artam katam pasyema histriya Translation. You yourself descend to propagate the transcendental science of devotional service unto the hearts of the advanced transcendentalists and mental speculators who are purified by being able to discriminate between matter and spirit. How then can we women know you perfectly? Again, we can see the humility of Queen Kunti. She says, how, oh, let me show you here. Are you, are you able to see it okay? Right? How the, this is the last line of the sloka, katampa shema hi striha. How then can we women know you perfectly? Because Queen Kunti was saying, you, you have come to, to, give, to give knowledge to the, the transcendentalists and to the paramahamsas. You have come to give knowledge to them. But we're simple women. How can we understand you? Of course, we see that ladies also have a very special nature which makes them very much inclined to devotional activities. They have humility and they are generally, they like to do service for the Lord. In other places, somehow when, when, we, when we are with the Indian people, we find more men and the ladies not so many. <laughs> Like tonight, you know, so many more males are here and less ladies. But in other countries, we find it the other way around. <laughs> Much more ladies and less men. So it's a, just a, the phenomena which takes place when we're with the, the Indian people. 
the, the ladies are more reserved. They're at home, many, many of them. They don't, they're taking care of the children. They, they're not able to come. But anyway, Queen Kunti is offering this remark that how can we women know you perfectly? Prabhupada comments on this. He said, so women, they are not much, very much interested, meaning in philosophy. We don't find women to be very philosophical usually. Men, they like to be philosophical. You know, especially Indian men, everyone has a philosophy, right? And so Prabhupada said, as soon as the ladies, as soon as they become devotees, they are also promoted, but generally they are not interested. They're not interested because they're busy taking care of the children, looking after the home and so on, and they think, that this is for the men to do, right? The men should do the puja. And we see the men are on the altar more. The men are there doing the things, doing the arti, doing the, they like to do kirtan and so on. It's more for the men. It's very, not so common that the women will do these things. Although they can also do it. If they're devotees, they can do it. And Lord Krishna also comments in the Bhagavad Gita about the ladies. He said, Mamhi Partha Vaya Pashritya, Mamhi Partha Vaya Pashritya, Yepi Su Papa Yonaya, Striyo Vaishyas Tata Sudras, Tepi Yanti Paramgatim. So Striyo Vaishyas Tata Sudras, Tepi Yanti Paramgatim. Lord Krishna is saying, that even you be of lower birth, and then he mentions who are of lower birth. He said, the ladies, the Vaishyas, and the Sudras, right? In the Vedic society, we have four Varnas. You have Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra. And the, the ladies, the Sri, the ladies, they are considered to be on the level with the Vaishya and the Sudra. So they're considered, but Lord Krishna said, they can all achieve the supreme destination if they're properly situated. They can all achieve the goal of life. And we do see that there have been some great, very great exalted lady devotees in the history of the Vedic culture. Actually, the head of our Krishna consciousness is Srimati Radharani. There's no greater woman than Sri Radha. We see her, her name is written on the wall here, Sri Radha. So, you know, she's, she's the perfection. We're all aspiring to get the mercy of Srimati Radharani. And then you have other ladies like Draupadi and Subhadra is there with Lord Jagannath. So there are many great divine personalities in female form. So Srila Prabhupada is making the point here that often we find ladies are not fond of philosophy. It means they're not speculators. They're not they're not jnanis, cultivating speculative knowledge. But they have a, a, a special nature which also qualifies them for devotional service. And that's why you will find many places of, of religion, there are a lot of ladies, many, many ladies coming. Prabhupada continues, this is a quote from Srimad Bhagavatam lecture, he said, not that even though they become interested, they keep behind. No. On the, with equal force with men, they also promote it. So following her footsteps 
any woman can also understand Krishna. Prabhupada's lecture, they're, they're writing exactly as Srila Prabhupada spoke, so it's, it's not perfect English, but anyway, this is what Srila Prabhupada said. He's explaining that women can also follow the example of Queen Kunti, following her footsteps, following the example of Queen Kunti, they can also understand Lord Krishna. Queen Kunti, Kunti is being very humble. She's saying, how can we women know you? Now certainly Queen Kunti knew Krishna. And she knows Krishna, not just simply in terms of the bodily relationship. Oh, that Krishna, he's my nephew. Not like that. But she actually understood the identity of Lord Krishna, that he is Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Kunti was an enlightened lady. And therefore, when she looked at him, she would not just look, she would not go to his feet, she would not inconvenience him or embarrass him, she would begin from above the feet of the Lord. Again, from the same purport, women in general are in, uh, unable to speculate like philosophers, but they are blessed by the Lord because they believe at once in the superiority and almightiness of the Lord, and thus they offer obeisances without reservation. So Srila Prabhupada is describing why women are so uh, fortunate that it's so much easier for them to surrender to the Lord. Men have so many and it, so many things holding them back. No, no, I can't. No, I can't do this. <laughs> you know, they have so many objections. But the ladies, that they have that simplicity, that sincerity, that they will simply approach the Lord with great humility. So this is very important for us to appreciate. Srila Prabhupada was commenting in another place in Srimad Bhagavatam. He was describing that, you know, sometimes you'll find that the, ma the man may be a devotee, the woman may not. And sometimes it's a woman who's a devotee, and the man is not. Sometimes, you know, I know I used to go to meet our life members in Hong Kong, and they would say, Oh, you know, my wife, she does everything. You know, she does the puja. She does everything for the worship of the God. I'm busy in the office, you know. My wife does all the puja. So they share the benefit because the wife is doing, so the husband enjoys the benefit. And similarly, when the husband is doing and the wife is just simply cooking and cleaning and taking care of the children, then the wife also benefits by the husband's devotion, by the husband's efforts. So there's that reciprocation in married life. They can help each other to progress out of the material world. Of course, if they're both devotees, then it's very nice. Then it's so much easier. And they can both worship the Lord. Lord uh, Prabhupada continues again, the same section. The Lord is so kind that he does not show special favor only to one who is a great philosopher. Queen Kunti was saying to Krishna that you descend to give knowledge to these great Paramahamsas, to these b very uh, big speculators. You have come to give knowledge to them. And Kunti is saying, how could we women know you? But Srila Prabhupada points out that Krishna is very kind to everyone. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, I envy no one. 
I am equal to all. Samoham sarvabhuteshu name dveshosti napriya. But then Lord Krishna goes on. Then he said, although he said, I'm equal to everyone, but if someone renders service to me, then he is a friend, he is in me, and I am in him. So Lord Krishna gives special attention to a devotee. If someone is a devotee, whether they're male or female, that is not important. What is important is the sincerity of purpose. As Prabhupada said, L Lord Krishna, he knows the sincerity of purpose. For this reason only, women generally assemble in great number in any sort of religious function. The sincerity of purpose, Lord Krishna knows. Why? Because he's in the heart of everyone. He can understand our sincerity of purpose. And he makes arrangements. Hmm. Of course, uh, m the Lord is also, he also utilizes maya to t test who is actually serious about approaching him. He will use maya, the material energy, to test us. He will, uh, temptations, how much we still have strong attachment to the material world. So maya, she has that task to bewilder the living entities, to see who is actually serious for the service of her Lord. Lord Krishna is the Lord of Maya. And Maya's job is to test all of us. And she will offer temptations. She will test us in different ways. Sometimes she will give us difficulties. Sometimes she will give us material opulence. Different ways she will test us to see how much do we really want Krishna. Because her job is to make sure that nobody goes back to Krishna who's going to give trouble. If they're simply going to go to Krishna and create a disturbance, then it will not be very good. Therefore, Maya, first of all, tests us. How much do we really want Krishna consciousness? And Prabhupada says like this, that, Lord Krishna knows the sincerity of purpose. And he, he knows these ladies, they're generally very sincere. We have wonderful examples of not only the gopis, there's also, you know, the yagnapatnis, they were also great devotees. And then there was Lord Krishna's wives in Dwarka, 16,108. And then there was also the goddesses of fortune. There's so many examples of devoted ladies and how they sacrifice everything for Lord Krishna. So Queen Kunti is describing that the Lord comes to this world to give this to give his knowledge to the Paramahamsas. In the material world, there's often troubles, there's often difficulties for people. The Shastra actually says, Padam Padam Tadvipidam Natesham. There's danger in every step. Material life in this world is full of danger. And then we have to expect there will be difficulties. Just like, well, Prabhupada gave the example, if you'd cross the ocean on a boat. So Srila Prabhupada, of course, had the experience of crossing the ocean on a boat. He wanted to go to America, 
And so he got, he begged a passage from the lady who had the shipping company. And she put him on one of her cargo ships and it had to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And Srila Prabhupada said, even you're on a big ship, the ocean is so big, the waves are so great that at any moment you can be finished. It's a, it's a very precarious, very dangerous situation to be on a tiny boat in the middle of the ocean. That's, that's material life. It's very dangerous. Padam padam tadvipidam natesham. Danger in every step. But for a devotee, there's no danger because we take shelter of Lord Krishna. Ma devihi esha gunamai mama maya duratyaya mam eva ye prapajante mayam etam tarantite mayam etam tarantite they easily cross beyond all the difficulties of the material world because they've taken shelter they've surrendered to lord krishna so in the material world people are often disturbed by the difficulties the problems which come in material life but the paramahamsas they are never disturbed those who are paramahamsas they are not disturbed. Paramahamsa meaning the supreme parama is like the, the, the ultimate, the supreme and hamsa swan. So there are some people they're described like that to be paramahamsas. The swan knows the art of separating milk from water. If you give the swan some milk mixed with water, it will drink the milk and leave the water. It knows that art. So in the same way, those persons who are paramahamsas, they can separate the spiritual from the material. They will be able to understand what is actually good for their self-realization and what is not necessary for self-realization. And in this way they will travel and move in the world without attachment to the material and dedicated fully to the service of the Supreme Lord. So that is Paramahamsas. Those who are paramahamsas, they have no problem with the material world. And a real paramahamsa, he understands that Lord Krishna is the center of everything. That he is existing within everything, as we have already heard from Queen Kunti's prayers, that he is in everything but no one sees him no one's able to see them see Lord Krishna with their eyes but they can see him with the eye of knowledge although they cannot see Lord Krishna with the physical eye they can see him with the eye of knowledge and that is required Paramahamsas have that ability they can see how Lord Krishna is the center of everything in this existence. They do not see anything as separate from Krishna. So the Paramahamsas enjoy that vision of seeing Lord Krishna. In order to see properly, we have to clean the heart. The heart has to be cleaned. Uh, therefore, it's important for us to hear and chant regularly. Srinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. 
Ridiantastohi abhadrani vidunoti suratsatam. By regularly hearing the topics of Lord Krishna, which is in itself a pious activity, then all of the dirty things in the heart are destroyed almost to nil. What is in the heart? The calm and the crowd and the lobe. These things, the enemies of the living entity. Calm, crowd, lobe, moha, mada, matsarya, lust, anger, greed, illusion, madness, envy. These six things are there in the heart of the conditioned souls. And we can remove them through hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. When we hear the Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita, when we chant the holy name, just like this afternoon the devotees were chanting Bhagavad Gita, so all of these different activities they help us to clean the heart. And when the heart is clean, then we can actually practice bhakti yoga. To do bhakti yoga, we have to get free of the calm and the crowd. And the lo we have to get rid of all these dirty things in the heart. In the beginning, of course, we have these things, but if we are serious, and if we dedicate ourselves to regularly chanting and hearing, then the heart can be cleaned and we can come to take up actual bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is performed on the transcendental platform. We have to come above the modes of nature to do pr proper, pure bhakti yoga we have to rise above the modes, the material nature. So it's important for to follow this process, regularly chanting the holy name, coming to see the deity, associating with devotees, going or living in holy places, just like coming here, this is a holy place. We're far away from Vrindavan or Dwarka, but this is not different. This place is not different from Vrindavan and Dwarka because the Lord is here in his deity form. And here in this place, all the activities are de dedicated to Lord Krishna. So there's no need to go to the holy place. The holy place is here. It is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. Vidur came back to Hastinapur to see his brother, Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was almost at the point of death. After the battle of Kurukshetra, all of his sons had been killed in Kurukshetra war. And Dhritarashtra was still living in the palace, eating the remnants of Bhim, who had killed all of his sons. So Vidur came back to preach to Dhritarashtra to get him out of his ignorance and to help him to get a better situation in his next life. But before Vidur met with Dhritarashtra, Maharaj Yudhisthira came and spoke to Vidura. And Maharaj Yudhisthira praised Vidura because Vidura had been driven out from the home by Duryodhan. He had thrown him out of the house. So it was a blessing for Vidura because he was able to go and visit holy places and he was able to take association from great devotees like Uddhav, and Maitreya. So after many years of traveling in holy places, Vidur came back and Maharaj Yudhisthira greeted him. He said, 
the, you are the personification of the holy places. He says, because you carry the Lord in your heart. So wherever you go, you make it a holy place. So the devotees also who come here, they make this a holy place because they carry the Lord in their hearts. And wherever they go, they will give the kata, they will speak the glories of the Lord, and they will chant the holy name of the Lord. So they make a holy place. It's the devotees who make the place holy. It's not just going to this place. Oh, Vrindavan. Oh, go, Dwarka. Oh, no. You, it's the devotees which make a place holy. Bhavad Vidir Bhagavatas Tirta Bhutta Swayam Bibo. Tirti Kurvanti Tirtani Swanta Stena Gadabrata. Maharaj Yudhisthira is saying to Vidur, you are the personification of the holy places because you carry the Lord in your heart. So that's what makes the holy place. So we have to understand these basic points to understand this philosophy of Krishna consciousness. All right. We'll go ahead. This next verse, very famous verse. I think you know this verse. You can chant anyway. Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devakinandanayacha Nanda Gopa Komaraya Govindaya Namo Nama let me therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto the Lord who has become the son of Vasudeva. The, the pleasure of Devaki, the boy of Nanda and the other cowherd men of Vrindavan and the enliven, enliver, enlivener of the cows and the senses. So this is a very sim very simple but very uh, beautiful and very meaningful verse spoken by Queen Kunti. R I remember we used to, I used to go out regularly on Harinam Sankirtan, sometimes in London and sometimes in New York, and we would sing this song. Sometimes we would just sing this song on Sankirtan. It was very nice. Ev let everyone hear these names. Queen Kunti is identifying Lord Krishna in different ways. She is saying, uh, Krishna is Vasudeva. Va now, Vasudeva to the impersonalists, the Vasudeva means the all pervading. Hmm? So, Lord Krishna is not only all pervading, but he's standing in front of Kun Queen Kunti. Is saying, Queen Kundi is saying, Krishna, ya Vasudeva. Krishna, you are Vasudeva. You are all. Per in other words, Lord Krishna is also the super soul in the hearts of all living entities. But he has come before Queen Kunti. He's standing in front of her. It's so beautiful. She is describing so nicely. You have. You see, she, Vasudev, of course, is also the father of Lord Krishna. So there's Vasudev, who's the father. But the impersonalists, they will not recognize these names. They won't say, oh, no, Vas." They, they will say, no, uh, because they are impersonalists. And they will say, when Krishna comes into this world, he has a material form. And, and they will talk all of these things. But we take everything in a personal manner. Lord Krishna is a person, and he has a father. He enjoys having parents. Lord Krishna comes to this world to enjoy relationships with his devotees. And w one of the relationships was with Vasudeva and Devaki. He came as their child. 
Of course, Vasudev and Devaki, they had in their previous life, uh, and first of all, they were Prishni and Sutapa. And as Prishni and Sutapa, they performed great austerities. And they wanted to get the Lord as their child. They wanted to have the Lord come as their child. And for that purpose, they had done austerities for a very long time. And so the result was, Prishnigarbha came first as their son. And then, Prishni and Sutapa became Aditi and Kashya. And at that time, the Lord came as their son, as Lord Vamanadev. And then the third time, they became Vasudev and Devaki. And Lord Krishna came as their son. Of course, they were able to have the Lord as their child, but they were not able to enjoy the childhood pastimes. Because immediately after the appearance of Lord Krishna in the prison house of Kamsa, Vasudev brought the child to Goku, to the home of Nanda and Yashoda, and left Lord Krishna there. He exchanged Lord Krishna and he brought back the female child who Mother Yashoda had given birth to. And he brought that back to Mathura, to the prison house of Kamsa. Anyway, Lord Krishna comes to this world and he is enjoying being with his different devotees. Vasudev and Devaki, they were prisoners of Kamsa. Lord Krishna had gone, he'd been placed in Vrindavan so that from the very beginning of his childhood he could be there in Vrindavan with the people of Vrindavan. Nanda Gopa Komaraya, right? Nanda Maharaj and the Gopas, the cowherd boys. Lord Krishna was enjoying with these people. As a young child, he would go with the cowherd boys into the forests of Vrindavan. And of course, the different demons would come and try to kill Krishna, and Krishna would have to fight with them and kill them. So, Lord Krishna, this was all pleasure excursions for Lord Krishna. It was all an enjoyment. Just like we go for pleasure excursions, Lord Krishna's pleasure was there in the forests of Vrindavan. And Kamsa's different friends were coming and Lord Krishna would deal with them. So Lord Krishna is known in these different ways. Devaki, Devaki and Vasudev, they were prisoners in the, in, by Kamsa. Lord Krishna had left them to go to Vrindavan. But after Lord Krishna killed Kamsa, then he re released Vasudev and Devaki because they're his mother and father. And the Lord released them from the prison house and then they lived together for some time in Mathura and then Lord Krishna transferred them, everyone, to Dwarka. And Lord Krishna spent many years living in Dwarka with Vasudev and Devaki and all of the other family members. He left Nanda and Yashoda and the gopis in Vrindavan. That was his childhood Leela. Lord Krishna was enjoying the childhood. We always tell children, the best years of your life are when you're a young child, right? The young children, they grow up, they enjoy playing, they don't have any anxieties, they don't have any worries. They're not, you know, they're, they're, it's a happy time in life. And Lord Krishna was enjoying in Vrindavan with all of his devotees, his wonderful devotees. They'd all come there to be with him, to take part in his pastimes. So Lord Krishna is also described as Govinda. Govinda. Go means the cows, and it also means the senses. So Lord Krishna is very fond of cows. 
we know Nanda Maharaj was a Vaishya. Although Vasudev and Deva, Vasudev was Kshatriya, Nanda Maharaj was a Vaishya. And Lord Krishna was brought up in the, with, under the care of Nanda and Yashoda. Nanda Maharaj had 900,000 cows, 9 lakh cows. And Lord Krishna would help his father to take care of the cows. And it said that because Lord Krishna was going into the forest every day, you know, if you go on the Braja Mandal Parikrama, you'll know that walking in the forests of Vrindavan, it's not very easy. There's a lot of thorns. <laughs> There's a lot of thorns and a lot of sharp stones. Not everywhere, but most of the places, <laughs> a lot of places. When you go, how many of you have been on Brajamando Parigrama? Oh, very less, huh? You're all so busy working. Yeah, you're missing. We hope at some point in your life you have the opportunity to go on the Braja Mandal Parikrama, to spend the month of Kartik and go through the twelve forests of Vrindavan. And usually, of course, devotees will do it barefooted. And Lord Krishna certainly, when he was taking the cows, he was also barefooted walking in the far, and so his mother and father thought, you know, our son, oh, he's walking in the forest every day. It must be very painful on his feet. We will buy him some shoes, and we'll get him an umbrella to protect him from the sun. Srila Prabhupada taught us umbrellas are actually good for three purposes. Do you know? One is to protect you from the rain, one is to protect you from the sun. Who knows what the third thing is? Huh? What's it say? A walking stick. No, that's Mo dogs. <laughs> Monkeys was close. Dogs, yes. And Prabhupada sometimes he'd take his umbrella, you know, challenge the dogs. <laughs> and the dogs would run <laughs> as well. They were afraid of Prabhupada. So they wanted to get Krishna's shoes and an umbrella. But Lord Krishna said, well, look, if you're going to get shoes and an umbrella for me, you have to get them for each of my cows also. He said, I don't want to be di any different from the cows. If the cows are also, well, you get shoes for them, they will need two pairs of shoes each. <laughs> right? So 18 lakh pairs of shoes and nine lakh umbrellas. So <laughs> there was no question. Lord Krishna was happy to walk barefooted in the forests of Vrindavan and enjoy the beauty of the forest with the cows. The cows and Brahmins are very dear to Lord Krishna. Namo Brahmana Devaya. Govindaya namo nama, right. So Lord Krishna is very dear, he is very fond of the cows and the Brahmins, Brahminical culture. These two things are very important for us in civilized society. We are trying to make arrangements for the cows. Uh, just now, in the recent times, uh, you know, our movement, we're very concerned that we should have ahimsa milk because so often the cows are not treated so nicely that people simply take the milk from the cow and as soon as there's no milk from the cow, then they think it, it should be just made into meat. They will kill the cows. And so that's very barbaric and we're you know, of course, we're, we're, we, we want to prevent that. And by our preaching, we want to encourage people that cows must be taken care of. They must be protected. And if we take nice care of them, then they will give a lot of milk. That is the fact. We want to have m milk which is not forced out from the cow. 
but it's given freely by the cows. So we, we do have some nice farms. The devotees in different parts of the world are keeping herds of cows. Like in London, Bhaktivedanta Manor, they have a good herd of dairy cows. And I, I heard recently in Czech, Czechoslovakia, they, ha they have an, a herd of cows, about tw only about 20 cows, but they get 120 liters of milk every day. So they're very fortunate, you know. So Lord Krishna is very fond of the cows. We also, we're very fond of cows, and we want to take care for cows, and we want to have that nice ahimsa milk to offer to the deities. Because the milk you get in the supermarkets, you know, that's not the highest quality of milk. It's, you know, often it may be reconstituted from milk powder. Sometimes it just get, you know, it's just milk powder. Other times it's been mod homogenized and pasteurized. It's gone through many different processes. It's not the genuine cow's milk which we, we want to give to Krishna. We want to offer the best to our deities. So that's why in India, uh, many, uh, practically every temple, they have a herd of cows. And they have the cows providing milk for the deities. When they worship the deity, they'll get the milk from their own cows and offer it to the deity. So Lord Krishna is very fond of cows. That he took his that his childhood was spent taking the cows into the forest. He grew up first of all with the calves, and then as he got a little older, he was given the cows, and he was taking them into the forest with him every day. So Lord Krishna is very fond of cows, and he is also the enlivener of the senses. Our senses are meant to be used in the service of Krishna. When we work for the service of Krishna, then we feel satisfaction. We want to be satisfied. We're looking for happiness, for pleasure. We will get that satisfaction when we turn to Lord Krishna and take up service. When we start to work for Krishna, do it for Krishna. That is what we want. You may be working in an office or in a factory, or but do it for Krishna. Do it in Krishna consciousness. And Srila Prabhupada wrote, there's a purport in the Bhagavad Gita, he said that some of the devotees, some of his disciples, they're working in factories, but they're dedicating themselves to the service of Krishna. And Prabhupada said, these persons are actually in the renounced order of life. So it's not that you have to change your dress or change your external position in the material world, but we do need to change the consciousness that we're working for the pleasure of Krishna and we dedica dedicate our time and energy for Krishna's service. You may do it by working in a company. You may think, this is not for Krishna. But if you're contributing some portion of the results of your work to Krishna, then that is the renounced order of life. You're sacrificing your energy you're giving to Krishna. So we, we need to have that, that mood that we want to work for Krishna, give to Krishna. And the more we give to Krishna, the more Krishna will take care of you. Krishna reciprocates with the devotees. He is bhakta vatsala. He is not karma vatsala or jnana vatsala but he is bhakta vatsala. He reciprocates with the devotees according to their devotion. The more we submit and surrender to Krishna, the more Krishna wants to take care of his devotees. 
Srila, just from Srila Prabhupada's purport on this verse, we'll read it to you. Oh, sorry. In this particular incarnation, he is more approachable. He at once left the shelter of his real father and mother, King Vasudev and Queen Devaki, just after his appearance and went to the lap of Yashoda Mai to play the part of an ordinary cowherd boy in the blessed Brajabhumi, which is very sanctified because of his childhood pastimes. Therefore, Lord Krishna is more merciful than Lord Rama. Now, of course, Lord Rama has, is very popular in the recent times, right? We all know that, of course, a wonderful temple has opened in Ayodhya. And it's a attracted thousands and thousands, you know, millions of people have gone there to Ayodhya to see this new temple which has been built there. And more and more people are interested to read Ramayana, you know, they're very attracted to Lord Rama. But you can see Prabhupada is explaining actually Lord Krishna is more merciful than Lord Rama. I will explain why. Because Lord Rama is always king or the son of a king. You cannot approach him so easily. Just like if you go to meet the ruler, you know, I don't know about here in Bahrain, but I know in other countries like in, in Thailand or in the UK, you know, there's a special etiquette when you greet, you know, you honor the royal f members of the royal family. They even have a special grammar in some countries, a special language which you use to address them. They're, they're given so much respect. Of course, because they have a very big position. They have a great responsibility. Lord Krishna even says in the Bhagavad Gita, among men I am the monarch. So the monarchs are representatives of Lord Krishna in the human society. But here... We're saying, Lord Krishna is more merciful. Why? Because he can be easily approached. Lord Krishna comes as a cowherd boy. He's in Vrindavan as a cowherd boy, playing the flute with a peacock feather in his hair, wearing a garland of forest flowers. He's very lovable, very approachable. And the devotees can approach him. They play with Krishna. They even climb on his back and wrestle with him. And sometimes they will take his food and steal his food. There's so much friendship and loving exchange with Lord Krishna. The gopis, they enjoy dancing with Lord Krishna and loving embraces from Krishna. Lord Krishna will even kiss the gopis. They enjoy this kind of exchange. There's no question of that with Lord Rama. Lord Krishna, therefore, he is so merciful because ev everyone can approach him and you can enjoy this kind of exchange with him as a person, a loving exchange through these different rasas, the cowherd boys, the gopis, the parents, Mother Yashoda, she can tie up Krishna, and the gopis, they can complain about Krishna, the older gopis, that he's always stealing our butter, and he fed our butter to the monkeys, and all of these pastimes are very relishable for the devotees. This is Krishna's mercy that he allows, to, he, he comes to reciprocate with all the devotees in these different ways. Lord Rama, however, he's a great king. He carries his bow, 
is very majestic, but it's not so intimate. It's not so sweet. The sweetness is there with Lord Krishna. There are two as there's Madhurya and Aishwarya. So Aishwarya, the opulence, that is the mood of Vaikuntha. Lord Drama is there in Vaikuntha. Lord Krishna, his mood is Goloka. In Goloka, it is Madhurya, sweetness. The more there is opulence, the less there is sweetness. And the more there is sweetness, the less you care about opulence. So Lord Krishna, he enjoys this sweetness with his devotees. And this is why Queen Kunti is appreciating how Lord Krishna makes himself so approachable to all the devotees. All right, it's nine o'clock. Are there any questions tonight? Anyone would like to ask any question? Yes, Prabhu. Yes. So when the uh, when Lord Krishna went to Dwarka, he was a king. So was he equally accessible as he was accessible in Vrindavan? Yes, it's a different mood. When Krishna goes to Vrindavan, it's a, when Krishna is in Dwarka, it's different mood. We say, if you read Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj describes it. Krishna is perfect in Dwarka. He is more perfect in Mathura. And he is most perfect in Vrindavan. So there's there's a, a difference. There is a difference. Yes, Krishna in Dwarka again. He is the prince. That's the, the mood of Vaikuntha. Krishna in Vrindavan. That is Goloka. That is the, the ultimate, the perfection, the highest. The, because the greatest rasa is there. Krishna in Dwarka, it's also Krishna, but the mood is different. And that's why when the gopis met Krishna at Kurukshetra, right? The gopis, they met Krishna at Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra was the only place outside Vrindavan where Krishna met Radharani and the gopis. They came to Kurukshetra. Prabhupada said Kurukshetra is famous for two things speaking Bhagavad Gita and Rathiatra. The very first Rathiatra took place at Kurukshetra. The gopis came there to Kurukshetra, and Krishna had gone to Dwarka. He had come from Dwarka with all of his queens. Previously, the gopis knew Krishna as a cowherd boy, but now he came from Dwarka as a prince. The gopis were not happy. They didn't. They said, this is not the Krishna we like. We are going to take Krishna to Vrindavan. So that was how the Rathiatra came about. They saw Krishna they said, oh, no peacock feather, no forest flowers, you know, all nice clothing and jewelry and opulence. The gopis thought, we will take him to Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, the Yamuna River is there. In Vrindavan, the cows are there. Kurukshetra, there was only military and elephants and chariots. We we don't like this place. We are going to take Krishna to Vrindavan. So, Vrindavan is the supreme abode. Yes, it's the, the special mood which is there. Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. So this is being appreciated by Kunti. Yes. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj. Here, here, Brother Maharaj. Here. Yes, okay. Maharaj, uh, uh, we know that Maya bewilders the people uh, to test the seriousness in Krishna consciousness. Uh, we do come across every day many people, especially in India, those who are following different spiritual paths and who we will come across in our association also in Bhakti Rukshas and all. Because of so many fall, uh, gurus are there, they are following how to preach, uh, how to mingle with them Prabhuji. Uh, this became challenge to preach Krishna consciousness uh, for such uh, different uh, spiritual uh, following uh, people. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Oh, you, you mean peop go you, you mean not genuine gurus or is it or yeah th there are so many for example uh, sadguru and other, other gurus other gurus from other lines yeah other lines they are they are arguing that yeah it is also maya as you said maya bewilders uh, based on their qualities they will acquire such a path they will try to follow that path but when we uh, they may argue with us when we are preaching in our bhakti vriksha and all they will argue any path is okay. So how to preach to them, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Well, somebody is saying any path is okay. <laughs> That's a foolish philosophy, right? That's foolish to think like that. Prabhupada gives the example, you know, that you, you want to train to go to Bombay. You, you don't just buy a ticket to go to Delhi or Madras. You know, you want to go to Mumbai. Not all the paths lead to the same thing. One train is going to Bombay, one train is going to Chennai, one train is going to Calcutta. They're all going different places. You have to know where you want to go. You have to be very clear where we want to go. So we have to explain to people that there are different aspects of the Absolute Truth. Just like the Absolute Truth can be, can be known as the impersonal Brahman. The Absolute Truth can also be Paramatma, but the Absolute Truth can also be Bhagavan. And we give examples to support this. You know, just like the sunlight is spread everywhere, so the sunlight is the energy of the sun. So the sunlight comes from the sun, the sun planet. And so there, it's, it's not that we see the sunlight and we accept that as being the so everything, there's a sun planet where the sunlight comes from. And on the sun planet, there's also a sun god. Now the people living on the sun planet, they're not going to be much interested in the sunlight. <laughs> they live on the sun planet. The sunlight doesn't mean anything to them. But people are, so many common people, they're just interested in the impersonal Brahman. And they think Brahman, this is everything, yeah. Brahman, we're all Brahman, we're all God. So that's their thinking. That's not correct. But Brahman is one aspect of the Supreme. But you have to go on and understand more. Just like the sunlight, it comes from the sun planet. And in the sun planet, there's a sun God. So in the same way, there is the Brahman, which is the effulgence coming from the body of the Supreme Lord. There is Paramatma, which is the all-pervading aspect of the Supreme, who is situated in the hearts of all living entities. And there's the Supreme Lord, the Bhag Swayam Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, who is situated in his own abode. So if people want to understand the absolute truth, they have to be willing to hear. Generally, people who just want to argue then it will be difficult. We don't like to argue, waste our time arguing with people. It's better to find people who are willing to hear. And if they're willing to hear, then very good. But we give people prasadam, let them chant Hare Krishna, and all their arguments can be nullified just by chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna is the best weapon to overcome all their doubts. 
let them keep coming and chanting with us and eating prasadam and gradually they will forget all the nonsense philosophy they've learned. If people are serious to take up Krishna consciousness, they just have to come regularly and associate and hear from us. And all the garbage which they've heard from other people, which be, be, maybe they've been watching on YouTube or whatever, then they can forget it all and understand that there is some higher truth. And Lord Krishna has explained it himself. We are presenting the words of Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna's own words. Lord Krishna said himself, he's the absolute truth. He said, there is no truth superior to me. We should accept Lord Krishna's word. Not only did Krishna say this, but so many great souls, Ramanuja, Madhvacharya, Shankaracharya, Asita, Devala, Vyas, Narada, they all accept Krishna is the supreme. Why should we doubt? What is their problem? We cannot think we know better than these people. So we just try to follow what these great souls are telling us. Uh -huh. Yes, Prabhu? Yes, well, in the third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Kapila describes devotional service and how it can be in the modes of nature. So devotional service in the modes of nature is of a different category. You know, you could be doing bhakti yoga, but it can be in the mode of ignorance, it can be in the mode of passion, it can be in the mode of goodness. But this is not what we want. We want pure devotion. We want to have devotional service which is above the modes of nature. So Rupa Goswami describes pure devotion. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma janavritam anu kuvyena krishna no shilanam bhakti uttamam So your question about being above the modes, what does it mean? It means we have to come to this standard which is given to us by Rupa Goswami. Anya bilasita, that we have no desire for fruit of gain. We're not doing devotional service to get something material for ourselves. And we also are not desiring liberation. Often the jnanis, their goal is liberation. So, anyabhilasita, jnana karma janavritam. So, those things are destroyed, right? So, that's important. And then, uh, it should be uninterrupted. Uh, Krishna nu shilanam. It should be done simply for the pleasure of Krishna. So, you give the example, somebody comes to you, and you, you know, you, you, you get angry at them, is it? What did you say when somebody comes? Uh huh. Well, that's definitely influenced by the modes. You know, we have to, we have to have the consciousness of seeing Krishna in everyone and everything. And so, something things go wrong. We should think, oh, here's Krishna. This is Krishna testing me. You know, this is a test from Krishna, and we have to understand the di the different the the difficulties, the challenges which come, and see them as arrangements from Krishna. 
and we have to fix our mind on Krishna and pray to Krishna, help me to overcome this problem, to put it right, to get things adjusted. So we have to see things in a Krishna conscious manner. We cannot expect there'll be no problems. There will be problems in this world. There will be difficulty. But we we must take shelter of Krishna in all the difficulties. Paramahamsas will not be disturbed by these difficulties. They will they will but they will go on to do their service for Krishna. Mm? So, we have to purify ourselves, p get rid of the attachments to the result. That's the problem. We're very attached to the results. We want to, we're thinking to enjoy the results. That is not the mode of devotional service. The results are to give to Krishna, right? One who is a bhakti yogi, he is also a karma yogi. Karma yogi Karmani eva dikaraste. Yeah, everybody knows the first part. Karmani eva dikaraste. I have a right to do my duty. The second part, oh, we don't want to think about it. The fruit does not belong to us, right? The fruit doesn't. Never consider yourself to be the cause of results and never be attached to not doing your duty. So that is karma yoga. One who is a bhakti yogi, he's also a karma yogi. He's also a jnana yogi. He's also jnana yogi. It's all there in bhakti. So another definition is also given. Anya, uh, 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 Rupa Goswami is given another verse. He says, uh, Anya Abhilasi, so, so, no, no what, where, how does it go? Uh, Sarvu padi vinir muktam, tat padat vena nirmalam, rishi kesha rishi kena sevanam bhakti rupat. So, sarvu upadis. Upadis means designations. We designate ourselves. You know, I'm the boss, I'm the controller, I'm the manager, I'm in charge. This upadi, this sarvu padi vinir muktam, we have to remove these designations. We have to have the spiritual designation. Our spiritual designation is J Krishna Dash, right? Jivarswarupahai Nitya Krishna, right? We want to get rid of these material designations. Then you come above the modes of nature. And using our senses, Rishikesha, Rishikena, Sevanam, using them in the service of Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Holiness Bhakta Vikna Minasak Narsing Swami Maharaj Ki Srila Prabhupada Ki So please chant one time Hare Krishna for thanking Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare.